Hi and welcome to another link guide slash link review. In today's video, I want to go over specifically learning Japanese in Link. I already created another link guide, so if you have like no idea what Link is, what it does, how it's supposed to be used, then feel free to check out that guide first before coming to this video. In this video, however, I want to take a closer look at using Japanese in Link. You may wonder why we need to look at Japanese separately. Well, the reason for that is that there are two aspects that make Japanese special compared to, let's say, Spanish, French, or even Russian when using Link. I'll first share these two aspects that can potentially make using Link for Japanese a little problematic, and then later I'll give you some recommendations for whether you should or shouldn't use Link depending on your level. The first aspect is that Japanese, unlike many other languages, doesn't use spaces to separate their words. When seeing a Japanese text, it's usually just a bunch of characters lumped together. You might get a comma, and then at the end of the sentence, you'll get a period. But usually, generally speaking, you will not have any spaces in between words. The lack of spaces makes it really hard for the program that Link uses to parse the language to know where words start and where words end. So while most of the time it's, it gets the parsing of the sentences right, there will still be quite a few cases where it's not quite sure where to parse the words, which then leads to a lot of misparsed sentences. There are rules to this, of course, and any non-beginner Japanese learner will easily pick up on these rules and very quickly be able to parse sentences themselves. But since Link doesn't exactly support language-specific parsing, their Japanese parser is quite basic and does make quite a few mistakes. It can then be hard, especially for beginners, to know where the words start and end, especially if the program gives you an incorrect parsing. In Link's defense, an interesting question that plays into that problem is the question what even should be considered a word. Since Japanese is an agglutinative language where essentially grammatical information is just stuck to the end of the word, sometimes it's hard to say whether that grammatical information should be considered part of the word or as a separate unit. Not a discussion I'm going to go into right now, but that plus the fact that they don't use spaces definitely is something that makes parsing Japanese a little harder than other languages. The second aspect is that they don't use the Roman alphabet. On a day-to-day -day basis in Japanese, there are three different writing systems, hiragana and katakana, which are two syllabaries, where each character roughly represents one set of sounds. Then we also have the kanji, which are characters that are adapted from the Chinese language, and those can have multiple meanings and multiple pronunciations, which we call readings. Now, the problem here is not that they don't use the Roman alphabet, because there are a lot of languages on Link that don't use the Roman alphabet that can be used perfectly fine, for example, Russian or Korean. The problem lies mainly in the inconsistencies of the Chinese characters in combination with the lack of spaces. Most Chinese characters have multiple readings, which depend on what word they're used in. While they are somewhat predictable, there are still inconsistencies, and having an incorrectly parsed text doesn't make it easier for the program to generate the correct readings. Basically, Link might put spaces in between words where there don't belong any spaces, which then again makes the program think that two characters that belong together might be separate characters. Link will then generate two separate readings for each of the characters, when in reality it should generate one single reading for the word. Sometimes that will work out, but most of the times, because of certain sound changes, these singular readings, these separate readings, will not be correct. Okay, now that we know that kanji are somewhat inconsistent and also Link's parsing for Japanese is not the best, let's talk about how we can still make use of Link as a resource for Japanese. As I just explained, the biggest problem that Link has for Japanese is the inconsistent readings and the inconsistent parsing. For someone who already has some experience in Japanese, learning Japanese, 
generally they won't have as much of a problem because they should be able to parse the text themselves and won't have to rely on the link parser. For someone just starting out, however, it can be really overwhelming when you're given a lot of different information on whether things should be parsed together, thing, how things belong together, whether a word is actually a word or whether something is misparsed. That is because when you're just starting out, you will not have that feeling for where words start and end. And usually textbooks or courses will help new learners by providing spaces between their words. Because they are aware that beginners don't have that ability yet, they do give you the option to add spaces to your texts in Link. Now, as I just said, the Link parser is not amazing, but they also seem to be aware of that problem and seem to have manually checked all the beginner Link courses. This means that for at least the mini stories and some other courses generated by Link, specifically for beginners, the parsing will be correct for all the words in the courses. That means that even someone just starting out with Japanese should be able to go through these texts without being majorly confused. Finally, here's my suggestion for who should and who shouldn't use Link. If you're already using Link for another language and you just want to dabble in Japanese for a little bit, want to see what it's like, then definitely go ahead and try out some of the beginner courses since all the reading and parsing will be correct in them and there should be no problem. If you happen to then like studying Japanese and you actually want to continue, I would suggest that you definitely get another resource to bridge that gap between beginner content on Link and being able to parse the Japanese language by yourself without the parsing help that Link provides. If you don't use Link yet and you're pretty new to Japanese, I highly suggest you try out Link first to see if you even like that learning style. Link is a really great resource, it's very powerful, but for Japanese beginners, there are a lot of other resources out there, so you kind of have to figure out what works for you. That being said, if you sign up to Link with the link in the description below, you get 100 free links, which just gives you a little more time to really explore Link and see if that is actually something you want to learn with or not. And finally, if you're no longer a beginner in Japanese, you can look at a wall of text and parse the sentences. You know where words generally start and end, even if you don't understand every single thing, then you might benefit from using Link. Especially the pop-up dictionary and the community definitions are really great tools to really get your Japanese reading going. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about Link or using Japanese on Link, let me know in the comments below. Or maybe you use Link yourself and you want to share your experience using it for Japanese. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.